Rice yields in Africa are low, but they could be much higher. Since 2006, food prices have increased in Africa and in much of the world. If farmers can improve their yields, they will have more rice to sell. So where can we expect the biggest gains? Upland rice yields tend to be low and erratic because of poor soil fertility and unreliable rainfall. Farmers can usually attain higher yields in lowlands, especially if they're able to control the water. Still, yields are often quite low, even with good water management structures. Much higher yields may be obtained with better crop management. In this module, we shall learn how to transplant rice. Before looking at how this is done, let's first listen to some rice growers from the village of Zianzo in Mali to learn about the benefits of transplanting. In the past, we used to broadcast our seed. Weeds were a major problem. When broadcasting, rice doesn't grow fast. Then we change to pocket seeding. This method is better than broadcasting. Weeding is easy, and even manual weeding is not cumbersome. Now we transplant our rice by dividing the field with one side broadcasted and the other transplanted. You immediately see that transplanting is more profitable. Yields are much higher when rice is transplanted. Compared to broadcasting, yields are two or three times higher. Other advantages of transplanting are that you need far less seed and that it allows you to select the best seedlings. Transplanting also gives the crop a considerable advantage over weeds and makes the crop easier to manage. Now that we've learned about the benefits of transplanting, let's see how to get started. Use good quality seed to obtain vigorous seedlings. However, make sure not to use too many seeds in your seedbed, as this will give thin seedlings and it will take too long for them to be strong enough to be transplanted. When we compare this rice with the rice over there, even though the seedbeds were established at the same time, managing the second one is easier. This is because the density in the first seedbed is very high, resulting in weak seedlings. You would have to wait at least 40 days before you can transplant those. At that age, the rice will not tiller well, and even if tillering occurs, you'll hardly get more than six tillers per plant. So when is the right time to transplant? If you want to obtain a good yield, your seedlings need to produce many tillers, as each tiller produces a panicle. Therefore, you have to transplant seedlings when they are young. So properly planning your different field activities is crucial. Extension staff generally say we should transplant 15 to 20 days after sowing. But let's hear how farmers decide on the proper time to transplant. Tender seedlings cannot easily be uprooted. The best time to transplant is when seedlings are strong enough. You can also cut the leaves 
We have here one, two, three, four and five leaves. I'm also transplanting 15 day old seedlings. They're quite thin and have only three leaves, so you need to transplant them less deeply. These seedlings become more vigorous. We must ensure our field is ready at the right time. So when you transplant older seedlings, these will give less tillers and need more time to recover and start growing again. You understand it's important to prepare your field in time. Make sure you carefully level your field and puddle the soil. This makes transplanting young seedlings easier. If possible, ensure a shallow layer of water a few days before transplanting. Our field should be ready before the seed bed is two weeks old. Now we can start transplanting the young seedlings. Water the nursery before uprooting the seedlings. This will minimize plant damage. Once uprooted, transplant the seedlings as quickly as possible to prevent them from drying out. Apart from the age of the seedlings, the depth of transplanting also affects tillering. Rice must be transplanted at the right depth. The white base of the rice seedling should separate the part inserted into the mud from the part in the air. The green part must remain above the ground surface. Regrowth is delayed if the green part is inserted into the ground. Let's have a look at why the depth of transplanting affects tillering. In this picture, you see two plants, one with many tillers and one with only a few. At the time of transplanting, these seedlings were equally strong. However, the one on the left was transplanted at a depth of three centimeters, whereas the one on the right was transplanted too deeply into the mud. The roots of the plant on the left quickly re-established and soon tillers started to emerge from the basal node, where the stem and roots meet. However, the roots of the one on the right, which was transplanted too deeply, lacked oxygen and died. The seedling developed new roots from its first node instead. Later on from this first node, tillers also emerged, but these were far less than for the plant on the left, which had developed many tillers from its basal node. As each tiller gives a panicle with lots of grains, you now understand that transplanting too deeply lowers your yield. Apart from the age of the seedling and the depth of transplanting, the plant density also affects tillering. Rice seedlings need space to produce tillers. So the more seedlings in a hill, the less space. It's best to plant one to three seedlings per hill. Obviously you save seed by placing fewer seedlings per hill. Children often transplant up to six seedlings at a time. Can there be a good tillering with that? Adults mostly transplant just two to three seedlings, but there are some who put up to eight seedlings, which seriously limits tillering. Rice plants need sufficient space to produce tillers. They produce tillers to capture the maximum of sunlight. Once panicles start forming, tillering stops. So by that time, the canopy should be closed. This will happen when you transplant rice about 20 centimeters apart. If at panicle initiation you still see water or soil when looking at the field, the canopy is clearly not closed and yield will be less than optimal. 
Besides, the empty space between plants will allow weeds to grow and cause additional yield loss. Let's see how farmers use various ways to transplant. In Burkina Faso, transplanting is done along a string, with the transplanting interval clearly marked on the string. The string is moved after each row of planting. Farmers often leave 20 centimeters between plants. Abdurrahmani Sise from Zianzo village in Mali developed a simple device to help him transplant in lines. Farmers in Madagascar have come up with a similar device. To save labor, some farmers use the size of their feet or hand as a guide to plant seedlings. They transplant uniformly by keeping equal distances between plants. Remember that when transplanting in lines, weed management will be easier. Even mechanical tools can be used, as shown by farmers in Burkina Faso. Some seedlings may not have survived the transplanting shock. Replace them within one week to ensure an even crop establishment. Let's summarize what we've learned. The most important thing to remember is that your rice yield is affected by the number of tillers. Apart from the varietal choice, tillering is influenced by three main factors. First of all, tillering is affected by the age of the seedlings. Seedlings ideally have about four leaves at the time of transplanting, because old seedlings do not tiller well. Therefore, prepare your field and seedbed at the proper time. Secondly, there's the depth of transplanting. Rice transplanted too deeply will have few tillers. Thirdly, keep enough distance between plants, ideally about 20 centimeters, and limit the number of seedlings per hill for optimal tillering. Proper transplanting requires good planning and discipline, but allows us to obtain a better harvest. The whole village knows today the advantages of transplanting. Other villages inside and outside Mali can use our example and be motivated by the perseverance of the extension workers and the benefits that we gained from them. Our wish is that everybody could benefit from these new technologies.